Hello and welcome to Lockdown Library Tales. This is the first tale in the series brought to you from Miss Brown's magic storytelling shed. This tale um, is about a man and wife, Mr and Mrs Vinegar, who happen to live in a vinegar bottle. And you may have heard other stories about people living in vinegar bottles. Uh, there are lots of different tales of this kind um, and this is just one of them. So I hope you enjoy it. Mr and Mrs Vinegar lived in a vinegar bottle. Now, one day when Mr Vinegar was away from home, Mrs Vinegar, who was a very good housewife, was busily sweeping the floor, when an unlucky thump of her broom brought the whole house down on her head. In an agony of grief, she rushed forth to meet her husband. On seeing him, she exclaimed, Oh, Mr Vinegar! Oh, Mr Vinegar! We are ruined! We are ruined! I have knocked the whole house down and it is all in pieces. Mr Vinegar then said, Oh, my dear, let us see what can be done. Here's the door. I will take it on my back and we will go forth and seek our fortune. They walked all the rest of that day and at nightfall they entered a thick forest. They were obviously both very, very tired. And Mr Vinegar said, OK, my love, I will climb up into this big tree. I'm going to drag up the door and you can then follow me up. He accordingly did so and they both stretched out their tired limbs on the door. And they fell asleep. In the middle of the night, Mr Vinegar was disturbed by the sound of voices underneath him. And to his horror and dismay, he found that it was a band of thieves met to divide their booty. Here, Jack, said one, there's five pounds for you. Here, Bill, here's ten pounds for you. And Bob, here's three pounds for you. Mr Vinegar could listen no longer. His terror was so great that he trembled and he trembled and he shook down the door on top of their heads. Away scampered the thieves, but Vis Mr Vinegar dared not quit his retreat till broad daylight. He then scrambled out of the tree and went to lift up the door. What did he see but a little pile of golden guineas? Oh, come down, Mrs Vinegar, he cried. Come down, I say. Our fortune's made, our fortune's made. Mrs Vinegar got down as fast as she could and when she saw the little pile of golden money, she jumped for joy. Oh, now, my dear, I'll tell you what we should do. There is a fair in the neighbouring town. You shall take these 40 guineas and buy a cow. I can then make butter and cheese, which you can sell at the market, and we shall then be able to live very comfortably. Mr Vinegar joyfully agrees. He takes the money and off he goes to the fair. When he arrived, he walked up and down, and at length he saw a beautiful red cow. It was an excellent milker and just perfect in every way. Oh, said Mr Vinegar, if I had but that cow, I should be the happiest man alive. So he offered the 40 guineas for the cow, and the owner said that since he was a friend, he'd oblige him. So the bargain was made, and he got the cow, and he drove it back backwards and forwards at the fair just to show it off. By and by he saw a man playing the bagpipes. The children followed him about and he appeared to be pocketing money on all sides. Oh well, thought Mr Vinegar, if I had but that beautiful instrument I should be the happiest man alive and my fortune would be made. So he went up to the man. Friend, says he, what a beautiful instrument that is. And what a deal of money you must make. Why, yes, said the man, I make a great deal of money, to be sure, and it is a wonderful instrument. Oh, cried Mr Vinegar, how I should like to possess it. Well, said the man, as you are a friend, I don't much mind parting with it. You shall have it for that red cow. Done, said the delighted Mr Vinegar. So the beautiful red cow was given in exchange for the bagpipes. 
Mr Vinegar walked up and down with his purchase, but it was in vain that he actually tried to play a tune, and instead of pocketing pence, the boys followed him, hooting, laughing and jeering. Poor Mr Vinegar. His fingers soon grew very cold, and just as he was leaving the town, he met a man with a fine, thick pair of gloves. Oh, my fingers are so cold, said Mr Vinegar to himself. Now if I had but a, a lovely, warm, toasty pair of gloves, I should be the happiest man alive. He went up to the man and he said, Friend, you seem to have a, a capital pair of gloves there. Oh, yes, truly, cried the man, and my hands are as warm as possible on this cold November day. Well, said Mr Vinegar, I should really like to have them. What will you give? said the man. As you are a friend, a friend, I don't much mind letting you have them in exchange for that, that lovely set of bagpipes. Done, cried Mr Vinegar. He put on the gloves and felt perfectly happy as he trudged homewards. But quite soon he grew very tired, and then he saw a man coming towards him with a good stout walking stick in his hand. Oh, said Mr Vinegar, that I had but that stick. I should then be the happiest man alive. He said to the man, Friend, what a rare good stick you have there. Yes, said the man. I have used it for many a long mile, and a good friend it has been. But if you have a fancy for it, as you are a friend, I don't mind giving it to you for that pair of gloves. Mr Vinegar's hands were so warm and his legs so tired that he gladly made the exchange. As he drew near to the wood where he had left his wife, he heard a parrot on a tree calling out his name. Mr Vinegar, Mr Vinegar, you foolish man, you blockhead, you simpleton. You went to the fair and laid out all your money in buying a cow. Then you changed it for bagpipes, which you couldn't play, and which were not worth one-tenth of the money, you fool. Then you changed the bagpipes for a pair of gloves, which were not worth one quarter of the money. And when you'd got the gloves, you change them for a poor, miserable stick. And now, for your 40 guineas, cow, bagpipes and gloves, you have nothing to show but a poor, miserable stick which you could have cut off from any hedgerow. On this, the bird laughed and laughed, and Mr Vinegar, falling into a violent rage, threw the stick at the bird's head. The stick lodged in the tree, and he returned to his wife without money, with no cow, no bagpipes, no glove, and no sticks. She instantly gave him such a sound telling off that his ears were ringing for months afterwards. The end. <laughs>